Okay, right. cool. All right, thank you. Yeah. So, all right, and then I know that some of you all are Logos users, so I'll point out how you can get to some of these tools. But over here on this left side, we've got a, a tools icon. So if I click on that, and then you've got a little box that you can start typing into if you know the tool that you're looking for. So this one, I'm going to start typing in the word Explorer, and there's an interactive called the Bible Books Explorer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open that. And let me stretch this across the screen here and get rid of some of this. Okay, so the Bible Books Explorer is really interesting. And it's something that you can get to to look at several things. One, there's just some really neat uh, just information. Almost, you know, if you were having a Bible trivia game, <laughs> you could look at. But the more useful stuff that I want to show you, really two sections of this. Um, one is the timeline. And then the other is called intertext. Okay, so in this tool, I'm going to click on this timeline option here. And over on the left side, we looked at this yesterday with the tool that we looked at. But anytime you're in Logos, you want to look for the sidebars because they have a lot of neat filters and ways that you can interact with the data. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to kind of limit what we're looking at here to the kind here, Pauline. So we're just going to be looking at these 13 letters of Paul. So I'm going to click that. And up here at the top, you see I've got a little breadcrumb area that I can clear out and see everything if I want to. But for now, just so we've got kind of a limited view, we're just looking at the letters of Paul here. So what you're seeing on this timeline option is a timeline of all these different books and their composition dates, which is really neat. So if you're studying, for example, you know, the Book of Romans and you're just wanting to kind of get into some background information, some background data. You can pull this up and then you've got information about the timeline. Now, this is coming from a resource in my library. So it's coming from the BKC, the Bible Knowledge Commentary. So that's pretty neat. But one of the neat things, too, is that you can click on the date. So again, here we are, Romans, and the assumed composition date, AD 57 to 58. So I'm going to click on the date and it pops up this little fact sheet. So if I'm preparing lessons on Romans or I'm doing my own personal study, I've got some details here just about, you know, sort of overview material that we all like to look at as we're studying any given book. A lot of these are hyperlinked and it's going to open a tool in Logos called the fact book, which is just a powerhouse of biblical people, places, things, um, all kinds of information there. So you could click on any of those and go there. But then down here, you've got composition dates coming from all throughout your library. So this is really cool. You can see different, and any of these are gonna be hyperlinked as well. But if you want to go and read about Romans and sort of the background information, all you gotta do is click on one of these links and then it will open that tool. So the Bible Books Explorer, really neat tool to just kind of see some overview stuff. But this is what I want to show you in just a little bit more depth here and mentioning the uh, New Testament use of the Old Testament. So there's this option for intertext. So I'm going to click on that. And when I pull up intertext, first of all, we've now remember we've, we filtered for just these 13 letters. But what you're getting here is a visual, which is really neat of the use, basically what Paul relied on when he wrote any given book. So let me give you an example. Let's just kind of stick with Romans here. So let's say you're studying the book of Romans and you're thinking, you know, Paul relies on the Old Testament a lot in, in composing the book of Romans. And I want to look more at where he's using those, um, what, what passages he's using. So on this outer rim, if I hover over the book of Romans, it gives me these little lines and these lines are saying, hey, here are all the books that he relied on. So that just in and of itself is kind of a neat visual. But if we click on this, it's going to automatically open up a search and it's going to give us all kinds of information here on these verses that are used. So let me go back here just one more time and show you again. You can 
uh, interact with this in other ways too. So if I hover, for example, on this line right here, it shows me, okay, there are 16 verses from the book of Psalms that are either cited, and I'll, I'll explain this too in just a second, but there's a relationship here between the book of Psalms and the book of Romans. All right, now what they've done, and again, I mentioned yesterday that Logos has just done an unbelievable job tagging all kinds of things in our Bibles. So what they've done is they've said, all right, there's different ways that New Testament authors use the Old Testament. Citation, which I have selected right now, this is going to use sort of a formula. The prophet said, or, you know, the prophet Isaiah said, or, or something to sort of announce to you, hey, here comes a quote from the Old Testament. Quotation is where there's a direct quotation of the Old Testament, but there's no formula, you know, the prophet said, or, or whatever it might be. And then it sort of gets a little bit more subjective, a little bit more uh, general as you go down the list. Illusion is like, okay, it's pretty obvious that this is the Old Testament passage that the author has in mind here. And then echo is probably the most general and the most subjective. Like, okay, this really makes us think about this Old Testament text, but we're not 100% sure. So when you're looking at the relationship between the Old and New Testament, you can sort of say, all right, I want to see actually everywhere that it's just called out and flagged, hey, the, the psalmist said, or whatever it might be, then you can choose citation, or you can choose quotation if you just want to see direct quotes and on down the list, or you can just see all of them. So again, what this does for us is it shows us these relationships and then allows us to interact with it in a way that we can pull up a search for all of these verses. So it works the other way as well. So if I wanted to say, hey, I want to start with the book of Psalms. And again, remember right now, I'm just filtering down for these 13 letters. This would work for the whole, the entire Bible. You see even some other works down here as well, from the Apocrypha, et cetera. But let's just take the book of Psalms. If I click on this link here, now it's giving it to me the other way around and saying, okay, from the book of Psalms, here's all these spots in the book of Romans where, and again, in this example, where it's actually cited, where there's some kind of formula there. So basically, you can just run really quick searches to understand any book that you're studying. Hey, how did Paul or whoever the author is rely on the Old Testament? And what is the interrelationship between those two things? It's just very, very cool, very powerful stuff. And I'll show you another interactive too, because this is really neat uh, in terms of the visual and quickly running those searches. But I'm going to close this and in the tools, sort of the same area, I'm going to start typing New Testament. So all I have to type is a few letters here and it pops up. So the New Testament use of the Old Testament. So this is a different interactive here. And I'm going to spread this across the screen so you can see a little bit better. But this is just sort of a straight through, a hey, starting with Matthew 1.1. Here are, here's the use of the Old Testament. And you can just scroll down through here and see side by side all of the New or Old Testament use in the New Testament. Now, again, remember on the side, we've got all these filters. So those categories that we just talked about, we might say, hey, as I'm studying through Matthew or whatever it might be, I'm not really interested in seeing everything. I really just want to see, you know, the citations or the quotations. So you can use these filters and pick your book and then pick which type you want and then go straight through. And you can actually reverse the order as well. So up here in the top right, uh, right now it's ordered by the, the New Testament. And if I say source, then that switches around. And now you can see it's starting with Genesis 1.1 and going straight through the Old Testament and then showing us relationships to the New Testament as well. A really cool way to kind of pull up. And there's a lot more as well. There are searches that you can do that allow you to look up these things. Um, but I just wanted to point out that when you're doing your study, one of the, the best things to do, obviously, is to check out those relationships. And Logos has just made that extremely, extremely easy. 
So let me go ahead and show you too, since you asked about using the free resource, I actually pulled it up earlier. So let me get that on the screen. And can you guys still see my screen here, I'm assuming? Everything good? Okay. So just stop me if there's any problem here. But this is, so our website, mpseminars.com, um, there is a link at the very top that gives you, basically they work with us to give us the max discount that they offer. And so you can go to our site and there's a link right here at the top that will take you right to the page where you can get Logos at the greatest discount. And a lot of really um, neat features there. But what you can also do if you go to Logos.com and I'll go ahead and just go there. So when I pull it up, one of the things that you're going to see is just download Logos right here. So you can download or you can go to use online and it's going to prompt you to sign up for an account. So when you sign up for an account, then what you've got is something that looks a little bit like this. So this right here is not the software that's on my desktop. This is a website. This is app.logos.com. And what I did was signed up just for a free account just to show it to you because you've got a lot of really neat stuff. So this here is the library icon. So if I click on that, this is what you get just absolutely for free. And so you can kind of look through some of these things if you want to and, and see there's some really neat um, options. But I was telling a friend the other day, one of the things that Logos has done is in their in the history of their company they've hired a lot of scholars over the years to work on some great things that are just basically theirs to give away to sell to do whatever and this faith life study bible that you see if for no other reason you've got somebody who you say you know what they need a really nice study bible well this is a free version and it just has unbelievable stuff. There's Faith Life Study Bible infographics, there's photos, there's videos. So imagine going to, you know, a bookstore, a Christian bookstore, and buying an $80 study Bible. This is more extensive than anything that you could buy off the shelf. So it's, it basically is an in-house Logos publication, but you're studying through, you know, the book of Ephesians, hey, there might be a video linked where you can have a walkthrough of the ruins of Ephesus, or there may be some photos of, hey, here's what the Sanhedrin looked like. Um, there's, there are illustrations, there's all kinds of stuff, in addition to the stuff that you would expect with the study Bible, good cross-references, good notes, and things like that. Um, so there's a lot of tools that are available just absolutely for free. And that is available just by going to logos.com and signing up for a free account. So I hope that's helpful. Let me try to turn this back over to you, Dr. Dean. And let's see here. Stop the share. I'm going to make you the presenter or the host. And hopefully that worked for you there. Uh, it shows me that you're muted. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what happened? We had our internet went out. Oh no! <laughs> but but you kept running the meeting, and it was recording from you to the cloud. So we're hoping we got the whole thing recorded. Okay. Even though we missed a, most of the middle of it. Oh goodness! Had, I'm so reboot, sorry about that. We had to reboot our routers. I had to reboot my computer. <laughs> so. That's, uh, that's always a, always a love hate relationship with technology. I get it. Well, you know, Satan is the prince of power of the air, and we are in the angelic revolt. So, uh, understood. Anyway, but I think you, you're, I think you are correct, though. It should have recorded that to the cloud. So, hopefully. yeah, I've had that happen before. So, it probably got all of it. So, that will be actually, uh, um, we'll get that posted later. And that'll be going up on, on the website so everybody can take a look at that. Amen. All right. Good deal. Thank so you guys, all. Appreciate that. Appreciate the time and everything. And uh, we'll be praying for you as you step into some really big shoes. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.